Waheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Waheguru Ji Ki Fateh. Yes, we start from Sikh salutation. Sikh greet each other with this salutation and is most commonly used in the Sikh places of worship before start of any activity. Let's understand its meaning. Waheguru is referred to God and is made of two words, Wahe and Guru. The way people say wow in English, it said wah in Punjabi, which means beyond explanation, for which we don't have words to express. And Guru is referred to spiritual guide, one who dispels darkness of ignorance and brings light of true knowledge. So Waheguru is for God, which means a divine light of truth, which is wow beyond explanation. Khalsa means practicing sex or baptized sex and Fateh means victory. So if we have to summarize the meaning of Sikh salutation, Waheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Waheguru Ji Ki Fateh, it means Khalsa or true sex belongs to God and victory always goes to God. Sikhism was founded by Guru Nanak Dev Ji. He was born in 1469 in Nankana Sahab, which is part of Punjab province now in Pakistan. Guru Nanak's followers are called Sikhs. Sikh means a learner or a disciple. There are around 30 million followers worldwide and Sikhism is regarded as the fifth largest religion. Guru Nanak set his mission to spread the message of truth and love. So he traveled extensively. Apart from traveling to different parts of India, he also traveled to China, Afghanistan, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Sri Lanka, Burma, etc. Pai Mardana Ji accompanied him in all his journeys. Pai Mardana used to play rabab which is a musical instrument as Guru Nanak spoke or sang his words of God called Gurbani. Guru Nanak Dev Ji's very first composition is also the first chapter of Guru Granth Sahib Ji, Holy Book of Six. It starts from numerical one which reinforces in the concept of oneness of God. Ik Omkar, there is only one God, Satnam. His name is Truth, Kartapurak. He is the sole creator, Nirpau. He is without fear, Nirvair. He is without hate, Akal Murat. He is beyond time, immortal, Ajuni. He is beyond birth and death, Sabhang. He is self-existent, Kurprasad. He is realized by the grace of Guru. There are three golden rules that Guru Nanak preached and demonstrated himself. Number one, Nam Japo. Always live in God's remembrance and feel his presence in his entire creation. Number two, Kirth Karo. Earn by honest livelihood and not by fraudulent ways. Number three, Wand Chako, share your belongings of wealth and time with others selflessly. Before passing away, Guru Nanak installed Guru Angad Dev Ji as his successor. This tradition continued till 10th Guru. So there are 10 Sikh Gurus. Guru Granth Sahib Ji, a holy book, is regarded as 11th Eternal Guru of Sikhs. Let's understand compilation of holy book, which was earlier referred as Adi Granth. As we mentioned, Guru Nanak sang Gurbani while Pai Mardana played Rabab. Guru Nanak used to carry pen and notebook always with him and would note down Gurbani as and when he had revelation. He also collected writings of like-minded Hindu and Muslim saints during his journeys. Next four Gurus also added to the writing of Gurbani. Fifth Guru realized the need to compile entire Gurbani in one book so that 
distortions should not happen. This was called Adi Granth, which later became Guru Granth Sahib. It has 1430 pages and is written in Guru Mukhi script, Punjabi. Apart from the composition of six Gurus, it also has writings of other like-minded Hindu and Muslim saints. Tenth Guru, Guru Gobind Singh Ji, added Gurbani of Ninth Guru to Adi Granth to give it completion. Before passing away in 1708, he appointed Guru Granth Sahib the holy book as his successor and discontinued the tradition of Guru in human form. It must be noted that two of the Sikh Gurus were martyred. Fifth Guru, Guru Arjan Dev Ji was martyred in Lahore by the order of Mughal Emperor Jahangir in the year 1606. Whereas ninth Guru, Guru Tegh Bahadur Ji was martyred in Delhi by the order of Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb in 1675. Guru sacrificed their lives to defend human rights, freedom to religion and the principles of equality. Sikh place of worship is called Gurdwara. Gurdwara is a combination of two words, Guru and Dwara. Guru we already discussed as divine light of truth, whereas Dwara means door or doorsteps. So Gurdwara can be defined as at the doorsteps of Guru or at the doorsteps of true knowledge. Shri Harmandar Sahib, situated at Amritsar, is regarded as the holiest of the holy shrine. It is also popularly known as Golden Temple. It was built by 5th Guru, Guru Arjan Dev Ji, who invited Muslim saint Sai Miya Mir to lay down its foundation stone. It has four doors in four directions, indicating that Gurdwaras are open for all, irrespective of caste, color, nationality, gender, etc. Now, what happens inside Gurdwara? Gurdwara will always have Guru Granth Sahib Ji, a holy book installed in the main hall. Sikhs bow their head only to Guru Granth Sahib. Idol worshipping is strictly not allowed in Sikhism, so there will be no idols in Gurdwara. Activities that take place in Gurdwara on routine basis are recitation and singing of Gurbani. There will be discourses on Gurbani and Sikh history. Bigger Gurdwaras may have libraries also. Langar, a free community kitchen, has become integral part of Gurdwara. Anyone can have food sitting at one place over here. All the activities that we mentioned are performed either by permanent staff members or volunteers. Those who recite, sing or deliver discourses can be referred as preachers, but not priests. There is no priest class or clergy as per Sikh ideology. In fact, there are number of instances in Guru Granth Sahib which says that priest class deliberately keeps a common man in ignorance. So no one in Sikhism has any specific religious authority over common Sikh. Now, question arises, if there is no single person authorized, then who performs ceremony of baptism? Just like it's done by father in church, Malvi or Kazi in mosque, Brahmin in Hindu temple, who does this for Sikh? The answer is, it's done by Panj Pyara, or five beloved ones. Sikh congregation may select five persons among themselves to perform ceremony of baptism. Only baptized or practicing Sikhs can become part of five beloved ones. In order to understand the concept of Panch Pyare better, we need to go through one of the most important chapter of Sikh history, which is creation of Khalsa. It was April 1699 on Baisakhi day, Approximately 80,000 Sikhs had gathered at Anandpur Sahib, Punjab, on the invitation of 10th Guru, Guru Gobind Singh Ji. Guru came out on stage with a shining sword in his hand and demanded a head. 
the one who is ready to get sacrificed for Guru. One person volunteered by raising his hand. Guru took him to the closed tent. After some time, he came out with a blood dripping sword in his hand and asked for another head. Guru repeated this total five times. Then Guru baptized these five volunteers and presented all of them in front of large gathering and called them as his Panch Pyare or five beloved ones. All were dressed in similar attire representing equality. Then Guru himself gets baptized from Panch Pyare and so did thousands of people on same day. By getting baptized from his Sikhs, Guru and Sikh became one and thus all the authority was bestowed upon common Sikhs called Khalsa. Guru empowered each and every Sikh and blessed them with five symbols of Khalsa. Since these five symbols start with alphabet K in Punjabi, so they are also called five Ks or in Punjabi they are called Panj Kakar. First one is Ks, unshown here. Sikh people are not supposed to cut hairs of any part of their body. Since Sikh ideology is based on hukam, that is to understand the will of God and human hairs grow as a natural process. Cutting them is considered against the will of God. So unshown hair are the representation of submitting to God. Second one is Kanga, a wooden comb. Unshown hair does not mean that six will become untidy. Comb removes dead and entangled hairs. So comb represents neat and tidy way of life to keep yourself and your surroundings clean and hygienic. Third one is Kada, iron bracelet worn on wrist. This reminds one of moral obligation when using their hands and not to engage in fraudulent ways. Fourth one is Kachara, which is underwear, reminding one to control their lust and not to engage in extramarital affairs. Fifth one is Kirpan, a sword of mercy, usually a small dagger. Sword represents sovereignty and commitment to defend the rights of self and downtrodden. All these five Ks are common for both men and women. Men and women have equal rights in Sikhism. Men have Singh as their last name, which means lion, whereas women have Kaur as their last name which means princess. Sikh people have standardized their prayer and Sarbat da Pala is the core of Sikh prayer which means well-being for all. Let's end this small description with Sikh salutation. Waheguru Ji ka Khalsa, Waheguru Ji ki Fateh. Hope you like this video. Please do share and subscribe to the Sakhi Sikh History and Gurmat YouTube channel.